tweet. All right, tweeted. Here's my uh, just in case. Here's my stream link. Yo, 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 everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Cham MV's Pro Corner, where pros come and show us how it's done. This is episode 61, and today it's got a, we got a day show for all you EU viewers. I know I, know I don't do this like super often, but uh, you know, I try my best to, to have you guys be able to check out the show, and uh, particularly when we have two EU guests. It's, um, it makes you know, obviously the most sense. It's, it's, uh, it, it works out best for the guests. And today, you know, we have two EU guests. Uh, today we have the, the uh, pleasure of having two Zergs, uh, both from Team Western Wolves. We have Zikta Mini, who recently won the WCS UK uh, Championships, so you know national champs for the UK. I was pretty, that was an amazing tournament. I, I was watching it and having a it was it was Taste Toasters casting and um, some of those awesome games. It was it was uh, really an amazing amazing weekend. And then we have his teammate, uh, Western Wolves of Sword of, who's a uh, who a lot of people might not know, especially in the NA, not you know might not know sort of quite yet. But he's one of those guys that are like just on the cusp of really, really doing some incredible things. And uh, you know he, you'll you'll see him in a lot of the qualifiers coming up soon. And, and I'll have these guys talk a little bit about well what they what they have upcoming and what what tournaments they'll be playing soon. But uh, yeah, you know, this, I don't want to really call this an up and coming show because you know these guys are really good. Just people just don't quite know about them yet. So we'll kind of call it an in between type of show. So. <laughs> So hopefully you guys will uh, uh, enjoy their play and hopefully learn a few things um, in the show. Uh, let's see. Before we get started, I was going to uh, make one quick announcement. So um, you know, uh, before you know, we kind of dive into everything. Um, I just want to say I know that this weekend's a really, really crazy weekend, but um, 
CSN and I are doing our first uh, My Favorites Bracket Series tournament this weekend. So uh, it's going to be on Sunday. It's going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern. And what it is, this series, it's it's really about, about you know it's really all about the community, all about you guys. And what I mean is, uh, it's a tournament series where you guys sponsor the tournament. You guys provide the prize pool, and you guys pick your favorite players, like your eight favorite players. And then basically myself and CSN, we just do the rest for you. We we make this happen. Uh, from a you know marketing standpoint and a stream you know like production and everything, but um you know we have a community member Zycos who's who's going to be doing the first one and um you know I just want to let you guys know about it so you guys can maybe check it out and uh, some of the players that are going to be involved are going to be Empire's Cost, Empire's Beastie, E.G. Machine, E.G. L.G. Gamer, Infinity Seven's Axlav, um, Absolute Legends Baby Knight, uh, Snoot, and I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. Who am I forgetting? Is that eight? Actually, oh, and QXC. Complexity is QXC. So those are going to be the eight that are participating. And hopefully you guys come check it out and uh, support support our series. We'd appreciate it. All right, let's get started. I'm going to bring on the, the two guys here. Let me uh, switch over here. And let's see. Let me switch over to the sound so we can hear them. No, no point in doing it if we don't hear them. Hey, Rick, Nick, how's it going? Hey, it's going good. Cool, cool. Uh, we're on the show, and uh, kind of want to start off the show by chatting with you guys a little bit, seeing what you guys have uh, coming up, and um, you know, I guess, I guess Nick. Like, first off, I just kind of want to see um, how your life changed <laughs> after winning the WCS UK, and uh, kind of, you know, what it meant to you and all that. Um, I don't know. So it's it was pretty surreal at the time. I only just realized how. Um, how much it really meant um, a few days afterwards, like, mm -hmm. compared to, like, I didn't have a job or anything, so I only just left school, so compared to how much money I had before, it's pretty insane, along with, like, um, like, stream views going up and everything, just, uh, it's just helped out with everything, really, so. Yeah, it's amazing what a win does for you, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, the prize pool was, what was it? It was 10k, right? It was... Was it 10k? Uh, it was 15k overall. 15k, 6K wow. 6k for uh, the first. Oh, for 6k, right? Yeah, that's a nice. That's definitely a nice payday. So, yeah, congrats <laughs> on that, buddy. I mean, and I mean, I feel like like the national champion. Being the national champion is, you know, I don't know. I feel like it's a really big deal, and and some folks, you know, aren't are kind of understating it a little bit. You know, um, I don't know. I I feel like it's huge. You know, just like when Vibe won the US one. I th you know, I think that's a big deal to say that you know you're UK champion, right? So. That's that's really cool. Uh, sort of a what's the next you know what's the next big event that we we should expect to see you in? Um, my next event is probably going to be MLG Summer Arena. Okay. Oh, I, next awesome. week. that's two weeks, right? Yep. Yeah, next weekend. Okay, that should be awesome. Yeah, I, I think I was talking to uh, Titus earlier, and uh, you know, I, we're expecting like you know <laughs> we we're we're thinking you're going to have a pretty good run in that. So hopefully, folks, check him out. He's going to be in the arena and. Uh, how many folks are in the arena? I forget. Like 16? Is that right? Uh, 32, I think. 32, 32. Okay, okay. So you're going to be flying out to New York, right? Yeah. Good stuff. I fly you, out on the 19th. You been to New York before? No, I've never been out of, outside of Sweden before. So oh, wow. Fun. Okay, so this is going to be an amazing time for you. New York's awesome. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you'll have like a day or two to, to chill out and visit yeah. a little bit. Should be good. Very cool. But yeah, so today, guys, we're going to be um, uh, we're going to be going over some Zurich strategies. Obviously, we're, I think we have a little bit of everything. So we'll have a, um, you know all the matchups, replays from all the matchups. And um, you know, right now, why don't you tell us a little bit like about I guess what y'all's favorite matchup is, uh, starting with you, Zikta Um, I probably probably easy at the moment to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. Gone through a few styles in it and. Um, I think I've settled on one which is really safe. Um, whereas in the other two matchups, like Terran are doing lots of random stuff, which like, I I don't like when they do um, <laughs> uh, strategies which I've never seen before, etc. Because they don't like the matchup most of the time, so they just do loads of random crap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Protoss are doing so many all ins at the moment. It's also it's just a pain. It's not so fun as well uh, as EVP. I see. So I think ZPZ just purely because it's more fun than the others. And um, more standard. I see. How about you, sort of? Um, well, I feel pretty, pretty stable in all three matchups. Have like, decent results, you know. But uh, I like CVP and CVP a bit more because 
the CBC can be kind of random from time mm. to time. <laughs> it's funny. I just said like so the like opposite. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, but uh, yeah, but you know, it, it's kind of fitting because I think what we have is we have two ZVZ replays from Zik to Mini. <laughs> we have a ZVP and a ZVT from sort of. So uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty kind of. Uh, kind of in line with what you guys just said there, but um, okay. Why don't we get to the first replay, and uh, we're going to start off with Zictimini's um, ZVZ replay with none only than the I mean the one and only Stefano, right? Uh, yeah. And why don't we go to two minutes, and then we'll pause for a second and um, just kind of talk a little bit about the the game before we we get started. Sure, sure. Make sure the overlay is switched over here. You guys see the game? No, I'm not yet. Okay, let me switch over. Okay. All right, I'm at two minutes. Okay. Um, so let me know when you are, too, sort of. Yeah. Okay. I'm done now. Okay, great. Um, okay, yeah, so you mentioned a little bit about you've you figured out, I guess, the safest build. Uh, I guess uh, a safe build to um, play ZVZ with. Um, so talk to us a little bit about that because I know I know with ZVZ and it's a little bit of like what sort of was saying you know sometimes it's a little random and you know it, it starts off like right off the bat with just what build you choose like right off the bat right so you know when you're choosing 15 hatch right or or or, or uh, hatch first um, it seems like you know you can lose to the coin flip which you know if some guy comes with a you know eight pool every one of their drones it's pretty darn hard to hold that 15 hatch right. Uh, I think so, but I haven't gone, I haven't gone 15 hatch in a few months. So oh, you haven't gone? Oh, sorry. I, I no, no, I, I, just, I just go 15 pool every game. Pretty much. Okay, so you go 15 pools. That's kind of what I was alluding to. Um, so yeah. so you don't think it's worth going 15 hatch at all? Because um, I see a lot of pros, you know, they'll, they'll kind probably, of have to It probably is. It probably is, but I prefer just to have like one build for every match. Yeah. Like, oh, I feel I like see. in the best of three, it's really important to like have a lot of different builds to use. Mm -hmm. It's like you don't get like line countered or you know stuff like that when you're playing into the three because that can really just like make you lose really hard. Right. Yeah. But like for like a ladder play, uh, use the safe standard build order is really good. Mm -hmm. I see. So you think it's worth taking the 15 hatch kind of I guess you could say quote unquote risk instead of just 15 pool you know like 16 hatch. I mean that's yeah. not really not that much worse, right? That that build itself. No, a 15 pool you don't get. It's pretty much the same economy as uh, 15 hatch. It's a little bit worse, but not mm -hmm. nothing major. So you can do it, and it's pretty safe versus everything. Mm -hmm. So 15 pool is a really solid, safe build. Okay. Yeah, that's the way I see it as well. Like, if they go 16, 15 hatch or 16 hatch, you might be a tiny bit behind, but so mm -hmm. it's nothing you can't play back on. Yeah, it's better than just like losing, like I don't know, 20% of the time or something like that, right? Like yeah, it's all. Yeah, gotcha. Um, okay, yeah, I just want to kind of want to start off with that because I think a lot of folks don't realize why sometimes when you're watching a series with pros, they'll open 15 hatch sometimes and open 15 pool sometimes, and it seems a little random as to why they do it sometimes. But um, okay, great. Uh, why don't we? Uh, well, actually, why don't you talk about this? This, uh, you know, just kind of what style you're going to be playing in this um, replay a little bit before we start, so that um, they have some expect viewers have some expectations. Uh, the style of this game wasn't. Um it wasn't like the newest style I've, um, I'm playing now. It's kind of, it's less solid probably, but it's um, it's better against certain styles. It's like um, you go two base and take your third kind of late, but go um, double Evo upgrades for um, for your roaches, so you go ranged and carapace. Uh, so it's like it's safe against all all in, but it can be hold. It can be hard to hold the. Um, Third versus like meters without um, without either the early layer or the really early third. Mm -hmm. So because uh, with the early third you can get cruise, so get queens crossing everything, and the early layer you can scout, get infestors, put spores and stuff. Okay. And um, but it's like really good against styles like Ling Infestor, which um, which is what Stefano did in the first game, and I thought he might do this game. So um, that's uh, that's what I went for in this in this case. Okay. Okay, why don't we get started um, in, in three. So three, two, one, go. On, on just normal, so faster, sorry, faster speed. All right, yep. Okay, so 15 pull, and are you going to... 
you're going to go 15 hatch or 16 hatch here? Uh, yeah, 15 pool, 16 hatch, and 16 then um, okay. 17 gas to get the queen up. Okay, 17 gas to get the queen up. Okay, that's good. It's pretty standard. It's safe against everything as long as you, as long as you don't like let them build a spine or something while um, on your creep in mm -hmm. the part you can't see. So, do you typically build an early bay nest too? Just um, kind of precautionary. Yeah, yeah, like okay. early as possible. You go like, um, speed straight away, and then with the next fifty arrows, get bay nest. Okay, and do you leave three on gas. Um. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I was considering point two, but I think now that I go for the faster layer as well, yeah, mm, it's better right. to get three. I see. Okay, it looks like Safana was going 15 hatch here, right? Which, again, we were talking, yeah. isn't that that big of a difference. No. It's just, you know, for viewers, 15 pool, uh, you know, keeps you safe against any any early pool. Kind of all in. Yeah. Builds. Here, so. um, I like to get two servings ASAP. And I do 15 pool just to scout and force him to make a couple yeah. of servings to defend his drones. Mm, okay. Yeah, that is that's like the general thing that you should do in ZZ, I think. But um yeah. so Stefano, like he's obviously gonna think that he's a lot better than me, so he's not gonna want to <laughs> so he's not gonna wanna like cheese in the final game. So yeah. I thought there's no there's no need to um, no need to scout him. Well, that would be pretty surprising if he cheesed you in the final game. Exactly. <laughs> wow. So like, his queen's just finished, and like he, he, you have two queens out at the same time, and you have one more inject than your opponent. Mhm. Mm right. So you gain like four lava with this build. Yeah, that's that's kind of where this build catches up, right? Right when yeah. um, basically that inject, that that second inject you're talking about comes yeah, out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. But the backside of it is that you can't afford to build to be use your lava ASAP. You have to wait a little bit. But. Mhm. Mm Got it. Yeah, there's a little bit of build up in minerals, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, just a little these little economic uh you know, details is uh is what a lot of these, these you know, these pro players are able to uh decipher which builds are you know better than others, so that's it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, and we see that Stefan is not getting a banning nest. That's a little bit risky, but he's getting extra queens and a spine, so he's fairly safe, which is any really fast banning banning aggressions. Yeah. Yeah, the the, the soul he's going for is weaker versus like um like a uh, later banning boss if you go and like mm -hmm. around this time start making um, a ton of wings. Yeah. Then he probably actually just dies with it. Mm -hmm. He's basically weak from this point until he gets his upgrade finished, pretty much. I see. Yeah. I see. From any audience. What do What do you think of the uh, the builds with you know anywhere from like six to eight queens? Um, I don't know. I'm not the that big of a fan of queens in Zerg versus Zerg. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like you can't really use them in, in an offensive way, so you kind of force them to play in defensive if you go heavy on queen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I prefer not to make too many queens in Zerg versus Zerg. Yeah, and also if um, if you scout a lot of queens, they're generally going for the no gas opener. So if you if you then scout them and go gas, you um you can just play as greedy as you want, and there's nothing they can do. I see. Yeah. Well, they'll okay. they'll be stuck on two base for a long time. Okay, so here's here's where well actually Savannah's getting layer two. I was gonna say here's where the huge difference is because you're getting Roachworn and Layer while he's getting a third, but he's actually upgrading Layer now too. Um, yeah. And that's kind of where this these builds really really kind of uh, split into different you know tech paths. Um, yeah. So yeah. talk to me about these lings that you're making right now. Um, those are more those are like just get some map control pressure the third. Okay. Uh, force yeah. them to make some units as well. And, do and, also to be, and also to be able to defend your third if any heavy pressure Yeah, so. Because, so like, so at this stage, yeah, sure. I didn't have that much scouting, so you never know if he's just going to, like, burst out with a ton of wings. Right. So yeah. it's useful to have some. It's always good to have so some kind of standing army, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and, and like you said, I mean, it's kind of... You guys both pretty have similar... <laughs> similar yeah. Zergling counts here, so I think... Uh, both were thinking the same thing here, but yeah, again, his third's sad. a little bit so earlier, right? Um, but he's going yeah. with yeah, that Ling Investor style, like you were saying, yeah. the double Evo with the yeah. Ling Investor. Okay. So like, 
here's the point where the Lingua Pesta style, like there's two different styles you can play pretty much, Lingua Pesta. Either you play very defensive with a lot of spine corners and you delay your expansions a bit. Or you play really like, just a ton of surgings and keep map control and like backstab and counterattacks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I see. But um, I, I prefer the uh, heavy spine uh, style because it's a bit more solid than uh, just the ling only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. as well. He goes for like the um, the more aggressive stuff. He's he only goes for one spine at the moment. He has a few on those, I think, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. generally just tries to uh, kill as many drones as possible. Right. Yeah. But you know, right because now he's ten drones ahead, which I guess is to be expected since he has a third. Um, yeah. But that's really where your advantage is, right? Because he has, you know, all those drones versus, you know, you have units at this point, right? Uh, yeah, essentially, like, um, there's a few timings which, um, in which Ring Infest is weak versus Roach, and one of them's like, before you can, um, before you get the Infestors out, and the other one's as you tech into, um, as you tech into Ultras, but before they come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this one's like, just before, and um, this one's just before Infestors are done, so... Although his lings are good versus the roaches with the upgrades, like mm. I've got roaches with burrow, etc. Like you see there. Yeah, I mean, I uh, love how you're using burrow because uh, I, I feel like I feel like zergs are delaying burrow these days, so it's. Uh, uh, I think burrow and CVC is like the most important upgrade you can get mm -hmm. because um, there's just so much you can do with it essentially, especially in roach versus roach. Like just regeneration after fungals is. Um, it's just ridiculous. It makes fungals useless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you don't kill them that right. Right. So like, the the thing about the Ling and Petra style is, you will have better tech and better upgrades. So mm -hmm. it's okay to cut back on economy. Like you see, the final barely has any drones in the minerals. And it's the his third. Yeah. Yeah. He he's making spines now. So like, all he wants to do is stay alive until he gets ultra out, and then he pretty much win. There is no like yeah. solid way to compete. Into the late game, but being a fester, it's just mm -hmm. way too good once it gets to the yeah. 3 3 once and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I see. So, what the mini wants to do is just like try to kill him before Ultras, or at least cripple him so much that he can't do anything once mm -hmm. he gets to Ultras. Yeah. yeah, and like, but as you see, he's cussing economy, so he's got a few less rounds at the moment, but he, like, you really want to cuss economy even more, you want to get like a few more than just four spine crawlers. Um, yeah, you want to have like, like this is kind of unsafe. Yeah, yeah, so I, I was wondering if, if... Okay, so you pushing in here... So what, do you, what do you think of this right now? I mean, I, I kind of want to get your thoughts on, like, um, was this kind of what you wanted to accomplish there? Like, getting a lot of the uh, the fungals out? Like, just, you know, using a lot of the infested energy? Um, yeah, partially. It? Okay. But, and um, I've microed pretty badly in that fight as well, so, mm -hmm. like, one or two times my roach has clumped up too much, and if that happens once versus the fest, it's like... You're, you're gonna lose them all because they can just chain bundle them down. Mm -hmm. But uh, overall, it went okay because all the links died. So um, he's got to reproduce those, etc. He can't produce drones to make more spines. Mm -hmm. So um, with roaches with plus two attack, it means they um, they two shot links as well. Yeah, so yeah. if right. so, the next timing that I'll hit before um, before ultras still will become like a lot more strong. Mm, I see. And now you have investors too, so. Yeah, which just shred links. Yeah. <laughs> How many fungus does it take to kill a lane? It's like two, right? Uh, yeah, they go down to like one health or something. Yeah, it's such a so lane. Right. <laughs> okay, so you back yeah. off the infested turns there, right? Um, you fungal infested turns? Um, no, not in this case, but in like Typically. major fights, mm -hmm. if they um, if they throw a ton of infested turns down, it can be good fungal. Mm, yeah. I see. Okay. It's like really subjective depending on the um I see. Yeah, so there we go using yeah, we're the just taking So I mean right now it's it's all about just pressuring constantly, right? Until because you yeah. don't want him to get to like you said, you want to get to ultras um, safely. No. And you don't want him to build up energy on his uh, investors either. You want him yeah, to like so. be using it the whole time. Mm -hmm. So right now he's got barely any energy, so I don't even bother like micro and the roaches. You just kind of because if you can't fungal you just clump them up. And yeah. um, I pretty much a move, but try and snipe off infestors as well if you can. Right. And um, just put so much pressure on that he can't get his ultras out and put them into the book. 
Yeah, see, and right now, I mean, it, it, it would have been so great if he would have had fungal. I mean, we would have had Burrow there, right? So he could have burrowed away those, those infestants, yeah. but he never got it, so. Yeah. But at this point, I, it wouldn't really matter if he, if he got those away anyway, because um, cause Ultras in, in ZVZ, you want them to be, like, in a ball before they fight us all, mm -hmm. because, um, like, if you've got roaches in their base and you catch the Ultras as they come out, you can just um, oh. snipe them down really easily. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You need them, like, with the fungals to hold the roaches in place, and, like, you need at least, like, five of them, I guess. Yeah, so that's yeah, a good question. Like, like, I mean, this is a very, like, very, you know, minor detail, but, you know, when, you, when you're in their base and you killed all their, basically, units, um, you know, I noticed that you have your roaches split up into three groups. Yeah. Um, is that the reason, because you just want to snipe out those ultras that come out, or you just want to basically just... Just kill bases or kill drones and bases as fast as you can. Yeah, it's it's mostly the ultras, but then um, when I've got barely any army, you can just you can just split up and um, okay. try and kill things as quickly as possible. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, one last question uh, to do with this game is: I noticed you know you got your third saturated some somewhere in there, <laughs> so I, I kind of yeah. missed that. I kind of wanted to see where did you build those drones? Like where did you build those last twenty drones? Um. um during the first like first two rounds of pressure, I got like uh, between five and ten in each one, I think. And mm -hmm. um, then right at the end, maybe I built like three or four more. Okay. Okay. So ba you know, w once you hadn't quite engaged, but you were pressuring, you were building and behind it. Yeah. Okay. Like every time you have a like have a good engagement, I threw some more drones in there. Okay. Um, right. To like, build up for the final push, essentially. Was it after or was it before? Like. Um, I mean, I, I think it's like you go for a few before is best, but then um, you don't want to go too heavy in case the engagement goes against you. Like you, uh, you miss micro and everything gets destroyed. Mm. Um, so it's like I throw, um, I made a few before, but then wait until the engagement goes my way and then make a few more. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I mean, it's a really, you know, again, a, mi a very minor thing, but a lot of folks just don't realize that, you know, they're, you know, where we actually drawn whenever you're in this kind of stage of the game. So it's kind of cool to go over a little bit. Okay, so um, next replay we're going to do, we're going to go straight into Zicta Mini's other ZVZ because I kind of wanted to get him to, to kind of explain the contrast between that type of game, which I feel like, you know, a lot of, you know, I guess mid-level players or, you know, even like, you know, master players, you know, they, they still do these days, which is more of a plus two kind of bird roach um, timing. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I kind of wanted to compare that to, like, your new style that you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Uh, so why don't we load up that one? And this one's against Cytoplasm on Daybreak. It's fun. And uh, same deal, two minutes. But um, while we're setting up, why don't you talk a little bit about the differences between, uh, I guess, a Roach-centric style versus, I mean, versus, like, the Ling Investor style, right? I mean, is that... Um, yeah, in this game we get for like a faster and faster cell. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still with roaches. In oh, it's still with game, roaches, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's kind of, it's safer versus anything, like it's just completely solid build. Okay. Um, you might have a um, slightly worse economy if they get like quick three hatch, but with the um, with the quick investors you build up more energy so you can get the advantage about that way. So it's just 100% solid essentially. Mm, okay. Uh, let me know when you guys are ready. Uh, yeah, right. Did you want to go to two minutes again? Yeah, two minutes again. Yeah, sorry. We'll probably get away with three minutes. Why don't we go three minutes? Yeah, looks like 15 hatch against 15 pool again. <laughs> we don't have to see that again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, three minutes, guys. Yeah, I'm there. Uh, one second. Yeah, I'm there. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. All right, taking your gas at I guess it was eighteen that time, right? No, uh, no, it's still 17. seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, because you go seventeen, then it frees up the one supply to get the queen, and then um, the you get yeah, the overlord afterwards. Mm -hmm. Then yeah, the um, what's also we're talking about before the um, fast links. I do a gas trick in this game to um, get two links out to so scout his gas timing essentially. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then. Um, 
like I guess you can then learn all the gas lines, but the easiest way I find is just to um, compare the amount of gas he has with the amount of gas that I've mined, mm-hmm. um, and then figure out like whether he's rushed it, whether he's delayed it, and um, the time we have to get the spine coil goes off. Mm, yeah. Right. So, uh, how how much of a difference in the gas would it be if it was you know if you were worried about things like Bane? Um. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like if you're like behind like 100 gas, then you need like uh, then you need to worry a little bit. But if yeah. you're only like 50 gas behind or so, then it's not a big deal. And you don't need to react too much. Okay. Basically, you wanna yeah, say you wanna put your sp- you wanna put your spine down when they put their veining nest down, because then you would have the, your spine mm-hmm. for okay. sure before their veining um, nest veining's finish. And it's just a single one. Yeah, you just okay. need one for the early game. Okay. So you got a good scout there. Know know exactly what he's doing now. And you feel yeah, you know much. you feel safe, right? But you still build that bane nest just in case. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you always, it's always good to have two bane wings, like early game in case they uh, do a slightly later um, wing bane, and also in the mid game when um, when you're trying to take the third, when you're trying to take your third, it's good to have two bane to try and hold off any pressure. Yeah. It's also good to have like sometimes they will hide like twenty sterlings and then move out with everything at the same time. And then mm-hmm. if you don't have bailings, you don't have time to build up any army to like get with it. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's the worst feeling in the world, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's an all in as well, like if you scouse and then they're taking all their drones off gas and they've just mined a hundred. Mm-hmm. Like you should just almost assume that they're gonna do that because that's the most common thing that um people who take all their all their drones off gas for. Yep. Yep, that that laying all in, that yeah, crazy laying all in. Um, Cytoplasm is playing the uh, fast third style. Okay, yeah. yeah, so third before layer, right? That's yeah. kind of what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Okay, so tell yeah. me, you know, kind of talk to me about the differences between this. Like, it's, it, I think it's getting close to that point, right? Where it's, it's gonna. Well, like, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just saying where where it kind of breaks off from what you did last game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I well, would have liked yeah. to see Sick Domini get his uh, gas a little bit faster this game. But he's going to be a little bit gas lord, I feel, now. Yeah, that, this was actually but probably, uh, the, I think, the first time I ever did this build, so. Yeah. Um, but the, the differences between the builds are like, you see, he just still doesn't have any tech. He's still on uh, just hatchery tech. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he would have a really hard time dealing with, like, Nudas if he'd lose his third. That's pretty much. If you go for Nudas. Your build wanna be, you wanna be able to deny their third with the uh, surlings before mutas comes out, so mm-hmm. that you can deny it again when the mutas come out, uh, which is the first first third. So with his build, he won't be able to get out infestors or hydras or overlord speed or anything. He will just just have queens as force with the mutas. Mm-hmm. So he will be very very locked down, very immobile. Yeah, I see. Um, okay. But this awesome. first third is really good versus like any sort of roach style reading. Yeah, it's pretty much. That's pretty much why I um, don't go to fast load, fast load every game now, just because of the um, the meters yeah. and kind of up and down Yeah, fast third is also good versus uh, being a tester, if you can get yeah, your third. That's true. Mm-hmm. I see. The um uh, the gas times was in my earlier as well is um, nowadays I go for the gas like exactly halfway through the um, the layer being complete. Because yeah. it allows you to get, allows you to get enough gas to um, not be gas out to source it. Yeah. Yeah. So right now you're getting basically all your upgrades. Right now you're getting burrow. You're getting uh, pathogen glands, roach speed. Yeah. Still droning though. So you're you're really just, you know, I guess buying time with just this ling harass. You're you're never committing to anything, any real attack here. Just. Yeah. Yeah. It's like right now um he won't have enough troops to be able to move out. And if he does, I can just build some rushes and um, and crush it in there. So. <laughs> well, yeah. one ling was chased off that roach, man. <laughs> <laughs> Scary yeah. ling. Okay, now you're taking but, the third. Um, yep. But or like, third um, mm-hmm. this uh, when you're playing with the first third, they w- would have a lot, like really late roach speed, so they can't really move out and do any aggression yeah. versus mm-hmm. you. So you're like really safe to play greedy behind it with like just a few speedlings. I see. So you see like. He's only making investors and drones right now, which doesn't really do much in you know, a like straight up engagement. But yeah, you want to get the investors as early as possible as well for the yeah, um, exactly. the energy. The energy. 
Yeah. Yeah. So at, at this point, I mean, at this point, you're you're basically catching up in drones, and he's trying to catch up in tech, right? That's really the difference here. Yeah. Um, pretty, much. Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like the the game's going to even out here in a second, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it'll, it generally ends on like me being slightly less than less um, in terms of economy, but the yeah. investors are out earlier, so they'll have more energy. So in that uh, fight, okay. um, I'll be more cost efficient, so it kind of balances itself up. Got it. Yeah. Okay, and that's where the huge difference is. Yeah, just having like yeah. maybe another round or two of uh, fungals. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. He's definitely got a lot more roaches than you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Twenty-five to eight. But Infestors are like so good in terms of like defensive position mm -hmm. that yeah. you can generally use um, use fungals to hold them off and buy time and kill the roaches as well. Okay, he's one one. Y'all's upgrades, yeah, upgrades are pretty similar. You have Burrow though, he doesn't. So that's oh, there you go. Got that huge clump there, so huge. Burrowed yeah. that one investor I was up front too. Very <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, like I mean, taking care of your investors. I mean, well, there's so many people that don't take care of their investors properly. So, yeah, it's yeah. really important to keep them alive. Yeah, investor accountancy is like pretty much the main thing is game changing. Mm -hmm. If um, if you keep your investors alive compared to someone who loses them. Yeah. Are you are you rallying larva here in in the groups? Uh, yeah, yeah. If you control click the lot um, the eggs once you've um, made them, yeah. you can then. Uh, just shift. shift yeah, shift group. Got it. Pretty much everybody does that nowadays now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. most people know that. Mm -hmm. I also think that you need a macro hatch. I always get that. Yeah, definitely. Down. I'm getting yeah. that, but yeah, it's definitely a bit like... I think like you always need it in, when you're going this style, because when you're making festers and you make a ton of films, mm -hmm. so your, your minerals start building up when you're not yeah, making like any mineral heavy units. Yeah, right, right now I've wasted the yeah, remind me to ask you about the timing of the macro hatch here, because I want to I want to talk about this um, this mm. infester harass that you're about to do. Because you know you, you kind of you broke off three of your main infestors like with the most energy to do this. Um, yeah. Did you? But yeah, I guess I guess you still feel safe against the attack without it. You know, a lot of times most people just get caught up with feeling like they need their whole army to defend their attack. Yeah. Like, like I would be, I would be a hundred percent safe if um, if I had no money. But it's slightly precarious. But mm -hmm. um, but I can still hold off even though I've macroed kind of badly. And then um, like in terms of using the most um, most high energy investors, mm -hmm. if you send investors with only about fifty to seventy five energy, um, the harass is pretty much useless because. Uh, you can just kill that many investor drones with just drones. Mm -hmm. I see. So um, you really, if you want to do it, you kind of need to send the high energy investors. Yeah. That's also like when you're playing CVC, if you have investors, you can al always have a little bit smaller army if you're playing in the defensive yeah. position. Mm -hmm. I see. You don't have to have like the same amount of units as your opponent. Yeah. Plenty yeah. of yeah. Yeah. better yeah. It looks like you pretty yeah. much put them in an all-in yeah. situation too with that uh, that investor attack. Yeah. Yeah. You pretty much had to go all in here. Okay. It's it's yeah. It's just a little, again. It's a little little those little minute things that you know the pros do, which which are you know make those you know make that split decision there, which is you know if if you hold off basically you're in a situation where if you hold off his attack, you actually win the game because you've destroyed his economy, right? Yeah. Pretty yeah. Much. yeah. Oh, actually, he's back at 66 drones. Wow. Yeah, but he lost a lot of mining time. And mm -hmm. he's mining too much gas right now, so he can't really spend his minerals. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Or so like when you open DC and uh, PVC, like you don't actually need skill that much as long as the um, as long as the drones are mining for ages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you'll get so much more money. Like in terms of the um, supply, if you look at it. Yeah. Uh, I'm just dwarfing <laughs> him because of that. It's huge. Yeah. Because he had to stop mining for ages so he could do something. Well, he had to stop mining for ages, and he had to use like um, you know twenty supply on drones that you used on roaches, which are forty supply. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty much the difference right there. Yeah. Yeah, and then at this stage, it's pretty much um, you can just pretty much end with the roaches, I guess. Yeah. Especially now he's out of fungus. Yep. Yep. Exactly. All right. 
Good deal. Yeah, a lot of little little details there. I think that um, you know, there was was really really good about that replay. So, all right, good stuff, man. Good ZVZ. I can see why you like ZVZ so much, man. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, sort of. It's yeah. gonna be your turn, buddy. Yeah. Uh, why don't we load up the uh, the Max Roach one? Oh, I think I'm covering something here. Oops. Okay, while we load that up, let me uh, update you viewers on what we're doing. We have uh, Western Wolf Victim Mini and Western Wolf Sort of on to discuss some Zerg strategies. And uh, we just went through two ZVZs with Victim Mini, uh, kind of discussing the difference between, uh, I guess the first one was more of a uh, two base Roach, kind of plus two timing. Not really timing, but just just plus two uh, a type of style uh, against a a ling infester zerg, and then the second one was basically you getting to infestors earlier, but still again roach roach infester, and uh, really discussing the differences. Uh, yep. It's the panda one. It's the ZVP one. Okay. Yeah. And let's get to. I think we can do three minutes again, right? We're probably safe to do that. Actually, we can take our time on this, and this is only thirteen minutes, so. So, so, two, so two minutes, two minutes. Uh, yeah. And then we'll start on faster. But uh, yeah, viewers, if you enjoy what you're seeing and have never seen the show before, um, you know, feel free to click the follow button that's uh, you know on the on the Twitch on the Twitch channel here. It's not your thing, that's cool. Just hopefully you enjoy the show today. But uh, this replay, why don't we uh, talk a little bit about it before we actually get this going? Um well, you, you want to explain the replay a little bit, sort of? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, basically, I'm doing a uh, version of the Stefano Roach Max at 11 minutes, but with uh, drops instead. Which is uh, on this map, I really like doing it because of the, the distance between the main and the third. And this kind of like small path when you move through, the, the units start like blocking each other and stuff when they try to move back to the main. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to break the third just straight up. Or the natural, because it's just a just small area for them to defend. Okay, so and when you're talking about drop, are you talking about um, a doom drop in their base, or are you just talking about like a few um, units in their base or, and a few units like on the third not, base? I do, yeah, like I split up my army in two parts. Mm, this okay. time, uh, drop half in the main and half at the where you go in at the third. But on other maps like uh, Cloud Kingdom and Daybreak, for example, it can be really good to use the, like small drops in the inner line. Oh, okay. And then uh, keep your army together and just like move in and kill, just kill off their economy pretty much. I see. You mean move in just from the front or? Yeah. You, mean, okay. you, just, you, you, okay. you use the small drops to distraction, and then you move in either in, either in like two parts. You move in into the natural line, into the third, okay. or just keep, keep everything together. It's just going to be really hard for them to defend everything. I see. I see. Okay. Great, yeah, definitely the the multi prong. I guess it's it's a way to do a multi prong attack without going you know, <laughs> yeah, or on, especially on this map because it's like you said, like the everything is just so close to each other. Yeah. What do, what, do you, what are your thoughts on actually the doom drop in the main? Um, you know, basically forcing them to come up the ramp, and uh, um, yeah, what? Do you th you think uh, that do you think that like the twelve minute max uh, doom drop is any any good or I mean like what are the huge weaknesses to that? Um, I haven't really tried it too much. Mm -hmm. The weakness, I feel like it's... If they're prepared for it, you kind of can't really do any damage at all. And you, if you go for it, you risk losing everything. And mm -hmm. then you don't really have anything to fall back on. I see. But um, I don't know. I haven't tried it so much, so I don't have that much experience with, with it. So I can't really comment too much about it. I okay. usually go for like smaller drops. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's uh, let, let's go through this. And the one thing I wanted to focus on is uh, really the build in this this um, this particular game, because a lot of people have obviously heard about the 11 minute you know roach max and even the 12 minute you know roach drop max. Um, yeah. But I don't think people know like what order to get everything. You know whether it's like you know the third or the third queen or the the macro hatch and or the gas timings. So that's one of the things I wanted to for us to focus on this this uh, replay. Okay, cool. Uh, let, let's get it started. Three, two, yeah. one, go. Okay, 15 pool. Pretty standard. Yeah. 
That little harassing probe. It's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so basically you go for a 15 pool and a 16 hatch. Mm -hmm. And if he blocks it and you can't put it down, you just get your overlord and queen and certain stuff. Okay. If you if you can, you want to place the hatch uh, before making the queens. Oh, nice. Good reactions there. Do you ever take the third instead? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Okay. If they block, like, put a pile on or something. Mm -hmm. But I think what, I mean, definitely getting this hatch is the most efficient, right? At, to getting um, that max rich. As yeah, exactly. Quickly. Okay. Yeah. Like, just getting this hatch gives sort of, like, a pretty massive advantage, really. Because mm -hmm. okay. you can, um, you won't oversaturate your main assault, and um, it's a lot, like, a lot smaller travel distance, and if you want to take your third, and then um, send yeah. them there. Right. Yeah, it, it hurts your economy less in later on to transfer to the third, but to transfer to the third early game it's can hurt your economy a bit. Yeah, so. exactly. Okay, so... so basically you get you get your second queen before your third hatch. Okay. And you. Yeah. So 22. 23. Okay, 23 supply. Drones in the main. Okay, so on 23 you built the. Okay, you built the third hatch. Yeah. And you really haven't let Larva sit for very long to do that, so that's good. Yeah, and now I just rally point drones from the main, so I don't oversaturate my main anything. Okay, yeah, so he remains at 16, which is perfect saturation. And then you're rallying to the natural? Yeah, yeah. natural, okay. So now I'm just spending all my money on drones and overlords, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get my third queen uh, a bit later. I want to pump out a few more drones before going in the third queen. Okay. These overall positions are nice as well on the first two. Like, I guess you're going to use the one um, like in between the main and the natural to see the nexus and chrono boost and probe production and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. And the one behind the gases to we'll check the gases. Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. The gases so are I'll always... I'll oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, now I get my third queen and I move the queen that I have at my natural out to the third and okay. I use that queen to do a creep tumor as well. Okay, so... I think that's... I feel it's really important to get at least one creep tumor out early game to be mm -hmm. able to pull off all ins. Right, especially on this map, yeah. With that rock there. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. might be better to get it in the third sometimes, but this game I choose to get it chose to get it the uh, natural. Okay, so third queen before the thirty six overlord, right? So um, Yeah. Oh no, I did build the overlord right before the the third queen. Okay, right before the third queen, okay. And then you double gassed so on six minutes. Six minutes, okay. Yeah. And then just keep on droning. Okay, it looks so like you're saturated there now, so you're probably going to the third sending him to the third now, is that right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then I just uh, just start droning from each hatch to each base. Okay. Still droning, building your roach warren now. Do you build an Evo with the roach warren or? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Okay. Uh, I don't know why I didn't do it this game, but for some reason I didn't. Maybe I just okay. forgot it. Usually at the same time you get your roach warren, you get your Evo chamber. Okay. So when's your uh, third gas timing? Uh, I get my third and fourth gas uh, between 7.15 and 7.40. Okay. Depending on how like how good the early game went, how many dro drones I was able to build and so on. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. So That's interesting. But definitely um, after layer starts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get your layer ASAP with your first 100 gas, unless you uh, think that he's going to do a gateway all-in. Then you get your speed first to be able to... Just get the speedlings out there and with your army. Okay. The slow starting doesn't really do much, which is a gateway all in. Right. Yeah. You need to like and to know about the gateway all in. It's like the gas timings on the third and fourth ones and the um, pro protection on the nexus in the natural. Right. Yeah. Okay, so there's your your uh, Evo's being built now, you're on four gas now, getting yeah. speed and So here's where my eight overlords. <laughs> okay, there they are. Yeah. Here's where my build order like separates from the Stefano Max. Yeah, I get my third gas and or my fifth gas. I mean, and I get a few more drones. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would, would have just stopped making drones now and not get the fifth gas and just go full on rogue sling until I'm maxed out. Okay. But so you need a little bit more gas to be able to get the drop upgrade. 
Right, that makes sense. Okay, so you need to get the fifth one a little bit early to get the enough gas for the draw. When, when was when was the time you built like um, six or seven overlords? Uh, like right after I finished saturating all my bases. Okay. And when I got the macro hatch, like right after I got the macro hatch. Right, and obviously you scouted that he wasn't coming either. You know, that's uh, kind of yeah, obvious. I, I just want to state it though. <laughs> yeah, just like scouting the pro count on the natural and checking the third. Mm -hmm. Let you know if you're getting all in or not. I see. So here I start drops, and I think I start overlord speed fairly soon because I want to be able to get my overlords in position in time for the drop upgrade, mm -hmm. so I can just start dropping A's if you want the drop upgrade finish. Yeah, but you you always want to start the uh, the overlord drop first because it it takes longer yeah. to to finish. So. Yeah, it mm -hmm. takes like uh, more than two minutes. So yeah. All right, so here comes the Roach Trek across the map, and he sees it coming. So he's yeah. uh, he's definitely in position to defend his, you know, the frontal attack for sure. Yeah, and here's the reason why a drop is so good because he's relying so heavily on the Immortals and Sentries to defend mm -hmm. his front from this attack. So he doesn't really have any mobility to deal with the drops in his main or natural. Because mm -hmm. both the Immortals and Sentries are really slow. Yeah, and also. Um, like, you can't do it now, obviously, with all these stalkers, but if you just see he's trying to um, mass up, like, more sentries and their muscles than normal, and for going the stalkers, you can just, uh, like, drop yep. right on the other and then you'll just pretty much kill him this thing. So, yeah, so, exactly. so talk to me about the, um, you know, you, you have quite a few lings in this composition. Um, yeah, it's basically, I build roaches for, every, for all the gas, then when they run out of gas, I... Make links. Okay, yeah, just fill supply. So, again, yeah. that that roach that roach max that people talk about. You know, there's a lot of links involved with that. <laughs> yeah, it you is. just don't have enough larvae to really max yeah. out uh, that early. So. Yeah, if you were to go for only roaches, you wouldn't be able to max out the eleven because you wouldn't have the gas. And if you mined enough gas, you wouldn't have the minerals. So. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so now you're dropping in the main, and yeah. this is kind of where that two prong attack comes. He's got to figure out yeah. how to. So I'm just waiting for him to move move up position, and then I'm gonna move into third with this. Now I see that he only has a handful of units there, but not yeah. to defend. Just push in, and you're rallying basically to the middle of the map. Okay, yep. Yeah. So he's he's obviously <laughs> he's obviously a little inundated with with having to defend two fronts here, which is always good. Yeah. And right now he's only got three functioning gateways as well. Right. And it also kills these two, he'll only have one, which mm -hmm. is just like, um, yeah. it means if you keep just putting on pressure, he's got nothing to, uh, to reinforce with. Right. So, uh, so yeah, so GG, guys. Yeah, definitely good stuff. So no um, no burrow in that build, though? No. Okay. Uh, you can get it if you want, but then you, like, in your max will be later. Yeah, yeah, obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, hopefully uh, you viewers... Taking notes. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll at least have a VOD now, you know, to reference uh, this build. So that was kind of the the main point of doing this replay, so that uh, folks could could really hash out the build themselves. But okay, great. Uh, why don't we? God, oh, man, we're we're doing great on time now. We're almost going too fast. And I might have to like snag another replay from you guys. <laughs> yeah, but sure. uh, why don't we go into the the fourth one? It's um it's going to be a ZVT against Braddock. Yep. Actually, the new Empire product, right? Brad, okay? Yeah. So. All right, guys. Talk to me about ZVT. We'll go to two minutes again. So, yeah, yeah ZVT early game is pretty pretty boring, actually. It's not the only, like, weird thing that can happen is two racks. Otherwise than that, there's, like, nothing, no changes mm -hmm. at all. Pretty much the same every game. Just 15 hatch versus a some sort of a fast expansion right there. Yeah, and two racks is pretty much why I don't like CDC at the <laughs> Yeah, I, I heard. <laughs> so hard to, I, I so heard about hard that. that. <laughs> 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 uh, but, I mean, two racks, you know, again, I, th I think a little bit with two racks right now is that um, because it's kind of gone out of style, right? I think a lot of Zergs are kind of rusty at defending it, right? Um, yeah. So oh, no, but then, like, the terms who are doing it have got better at excusing it as well. Yeah, exactly. So it's pretty much once they even start the bunker, if they start the bunker in the right place, you've just lost. Like, they don't even need to finish it. 
as long as it well, starts, it's going to finish. Um, also, like with versus Turex, it's really important to get the scout off at, at their main, at their SCV count. Mm -hmm. Make, then you will know like how hard they are committing to it and how early the, the Rex will come. Right. So and you, you really have to send that scout then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like you do at least. Like if you, if I weren't afraid of a two rex, I would never don't scout. Like um, I always scout around to try and find like the positioning where they could have hidden the two rex as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, like, um, I'd I always send a drone to the third on this map, for example. Right. Okay. I send my overlord to the third of this map, but I send my yeah. scouting drone like just to poke out at like common spots for proxy rexes. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess we can. Okay. Yeah. yeah, why don't we start up? Three, two, one, go. Alright, and there's your scout going out. Yeah, I mean I think there's a lot of Zerks right now that don't scout and yeah. <laughs> I just I just can't see how that's that's safe against two racks and that's probably why a lot of turns are two racksing again, so Yeah. Um, at least once in a series, right? So Yeah, it can be really strong. Mm-hmm. Uh so with with this style, if they don't two racks do you, do you guys get like the six queens that type of thing? Um, I'm not a big fan of the six queen build, but I do like a kind of a variation of it. I get four queens, but they get earlier link speed, so I have like Zerlings to deal with, Hellion runbys and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I see. That can happen. Yeah, I'm trying to make it. Slow. I do love like, the one thing I do love about the six queens is that the creed spread is just sick whenever you have yeah the six yeah. queens. You get basically the same uh, creep spread, but with, with uh, Four queens, but it's not as good. Mm -hmm, I see. Like the difference, it push out pushes out in the map at the same speed, but you get like more coverage with six queens. Yeah, and if if they if they do clear out some, you still have extra tumors, right? Um, yeah. To, to, to remake it. Although, so. yeah, if I lose uh, my queen uh, in the like, in the mid game or something, I always build a new one to make sure I can always rebuild the creep. Right. I feel like that's really important. Yeah, to be that's able to good. Army. It's definitely good. Yeah, I, re I kind of remember uh, Zictimini that uh, I remember one of your games. I think it was against a Muslim or who, you know, one of the turns. I just remember yeah, your creep spread just being such <laughs> an important part of that game. Um, yeah, on Antigua as well. Like the creep spread is pretty much the only thing. You know, like if you don't have an like amazing creep spread at the fourth and um, at every base as well on Antigua, you're gonna lose. Essentially. Yeah, yeah. Antigua yeah. is it's really hard with this turn. It yeah, is, so. for th for those of you who don't know, I think. I think I we measured it out. I measured it out with a friend one night. Um, an overlord creeping on a on a base. I think that I believe that's. Is it one minute delay? I think it's a one minute delay on the base. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's, uh, it's at least minute. Yeah. yeah. And the tumor is double that. So. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Nice. Yeah. So getting a tumor is like crazy good <laughs> in those spots. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we're okay. Pretty typical opening from both of you guys, I think. Um, yeah. One racks expand. Obviously, you're going to 15 hatch. Getting. You've got your well. You're starting your speed now. Okay. Yeah. He's getting reactor helium. Mm -hmm. Do you get that early yeah. third? You know, a lot of people are getting uh, like. Third I get it right like now. semi, <laughs> semi early. Okay. I don't get it too early, but not too late either. Mm -hmm. I get it around like 6:30. Okay, yeah, that's, that's still really early, actually. But yeah, some folks get it sub six, which is <laughs> really, really yeah. aggressive or greedy. Yeah. Yeah, you so, like you've got to get it fairly early, so you deal with the um, the banshees the banshee. and yeah, exactly. um, yeah, and it, like the earlier you get it, the less chance they're gonna have aliens to stop you drone getting them. Oh, okay. So, so that's pretty much. Oh, so the main that's reason is to get it. it Okay, so it's the main reason is to get the actual third up before the Banshee's there, yeah, so yeah. it can't just deny you there the whole time. Okay. Yeah, well, like, if you don't have it up when the Hellions reach, they can um, keep killing your drone with Hellions until you manage to get enough creep over there, mm -hmm. so you get the Queens. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, yeah. so you'll just uh, so you'll just die to Banshee's if you don't manage to get a third up. Yeah. yeah. And like so you said, I mean, you just barely got it started before uh, they got there, so... Yeah. Well, like, here I'm going for a Roach Worm because I always get a few Roaches out early game CVT to be able to, like, protect my Creep Terminus really well because I only have two Queens. And also mm -hmm. to, like, be safe from any early, like, mass Heli and Marauder pushes and stuff like that. Right. And behind it, I'm just getting uh, another Queen, Creep Spread, and, uh, 
a double evo. Oh, I got my uh, my queen. Cause I scaled banshees, I think. Yeah, I scaled banshees. Okay, so an extra queen. Yep. Yeah. Breaking down the rocks. Yeah, lots of Terrans are opening banshee now, which um, makes sense. Yeah. I, I kind of uh, understand the logic behind that. Um, it kind of buys time. It's really all about just buying the Terran time to get you know their third base up and yeah, a lot of their a lot of their infrastructure situated right. Yeah, yeah. It gives them sick map control and mm -hmm. like unless you have muted us out, you can't really move up onto the map. Right. Until your, your creep arrives. So. What do you think about yes. Meta these days? Because I mean, DRG's been playing a lot of Meta. Yeah, I, yeah. I play Meta. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's I don't right. Really yeah, like yeah, yeah, you play, you play Mito too. I feel like versus Tyrant with good micro, it's too hard to make it cost, effic cost efficient. But um, I don't know. I haven't played in a long time, so. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I've always, I mean, I, I, I thought the Mito was always really good because um, it at least contains medevac count. You yeah. Know, so like when you know those engagements, you at least start them over, right, from a medevac standpoint. Um, yeah. yeah, that's pretty much like all I think you should use Mito for, like. Mm -hmm. um, when people used to go Mesa Ling in like every game and that was just standard they used to go to like as many Mesa's as possible mm -hmm, right. but um, I think if you want to play it now it's got to be like 10 Mesa's max yeah. Um, yeah. and then you just go like ridiculous amount of um, Ling Ling uh, while transitioning into while transitioning into like Infestors and then Ultras uh, Ultra Brutalords so you can keep switching between them for later mm -hmm, right yeah, Ling Bane is so good. I mean, <laughs> like by itself, <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. It's just not really good when you have Metamax healing and they got like 2-2 two -two or 3-3. Three -three. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so you got Roaches here. Talk yeah, to me about getting, Roaches. So my game plan in CBT is usually just I defend any early game harassments or pushes with uh, Roach Ling mm -hmm. until I get Infestors out. And once I can start making Infestors, I just completely stop making Roaches. Okay. Focus. Only on investor and certainly. Okay, so if he doesn't come attack with, um, you know, if he doesn't come attack, what, like, what do you do with the, what do you do with those Russian links? Do you just wait until you max? I just, or? I just stay passive and try to like kill up the hive because like there's never no reason to be aggressive to that turn in the mid game. Mm -hmm. I feel because you want to hit brood lords. That's your like goal with the CVT. Oh, I see. Okay. So you That's just like, make sure it's completely it's different to me. Yeah, yeah. So, like, if, yeah, and then like with new style, and you want to play like really aggressive, try and then keep trading, use some to kill the medivacs, and then um, be cost effective with the links and the bendings when they haven't got medivacs. Right. Um, and yeah, it's like completely. It's like the exact opposite style of investing. Yeah, I mean they yeah. both work. It's just you know that that's why this matchup's kind of neat <laughs> because. I uh, yeah I feel like there's different styles of playing where, um you know where the other ones are 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 kind of I think like ZVP is kind of going more towards late game again uh where these you know a bunch of mid games at least from the Zerg standpoint like we can't do much with any mid mid game attacks except for maybe like what you just showed us that road drop yeah uh, so like okay. now I'm just this is a really passive game like we're both just sitting back and macroing up yeah so but basically his he wants is sick man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. He didn't do much to take map control, so when you mm -hmm. get map control as Zerg, this is what happens pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, also, he, what he wants to do right now is probably hit a 2 2 timing, 2 2 upgrades um, before Brood Lords. Mm -hmm. So, what I, w I want to do is just take up the Brood Lords, get my expansions up, and make sure I can del at least delay his push uh, until I get Brood Lords or kill it off. Before. I see. Uh, he seems so marine heavy here. It, it seems, I don't know. It seems uh, kind of funny, given that he he probably knows you're going to Infestor here. Yeah, I would like to. Well, I would have liked to see a second factory. Oh, yes, one. Yeah, I would like to see a few more tanks. Five really, really isn't enough. Yeah, maybe. exactly. So here, when I see him move out, I just max out on links. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this just seems so weak. I mean, I mean his attack. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, he got two Infestors there though. Oh yeah, that was a bad miss rally. Yeah, and that's the thing the Terrans the Terrans all focus the investors with their tanks these days, so Yeah. Gotta Yeah these orcs have really to be so careful. Yeah. Losing investors in Sagris turn is really hurts you a lot because you need to save all the gas you can for brute boards. 
Mm -hmm. right. You don't want to waste uh, gas on rebuilding uh, investors. All right, looks like so his reinforcements just got here, but oh, he's unseizing here on your creep. Yeah. Oh my and I'm god! I'm setting up our flag. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. He didn't even wait for the creep to clear it. Oh. Yeah. That's yeah, that was a really not risky good for him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he's got his okay, he's got his marines clumped up pretty well there. Oh, there's the, there's the fungal. Yeah. So basically, I just kept my pesters back until uh, the uh, tanks were dead, so I did, if they wouldn't die, mm -hmm. so they went in and just like fungal all the marines. Right. So there's just so I guess what your point is is there's just no there's no reason to send your investors in in the initial attack until until the marines kind of because the marines are always yeah. behind the tanks, right? Because they 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 want to. They want to be the last guy standing, so yeah. you just wait until like, that happens and they, they bunch up again? Yeah, because uh, if you move in, like you, sometimes you have to move in to fungal, like clumped up marines, but you want to like keep your investors as much in the back as possible until the tanks are gone. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. It's, it's, it hurts a lot to listen, and they die really fast the tank splash, so... Right. Oh, that was a, um, it was a really risky position from Bass up as well, like, yeah. uh, it doesn't really play play bending heavy cells, but like if he did just add a bending nest in um, and had some bendings, he could have been. Um, and yeah. if he just got a surround, he would have just like instantly won the game. His brass was just yeah. like, standing on this group mm -hmm. in the middle of the place, which you can easily surround, and he wouldn't have been able to do anything. Yeah, he even <laughs> un sieged on his creep, which was I felt like yeah, was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could have just uh, went in right there. Uh, even yeah. even if he is sieged. Um, yeah. Uh, and then sort of just decides to engage with them and see pretty much just lost. So at, at this point he's really far behind because he has no fourth base. He's just getting it finished now. Mm -hmm. And he's committed really hard to this push and it didn't really do too much. Yeah. So exactly. Still trying to follow it up. Seems like a older style <laughs> by him. Yeah. So basically, at this point, I just want to max out on Roach uh, Corrupt Infester. Yeah. So do you ever like to go Ultras? Or? Uh, yeah, I do it sometimes. It depends really on what uh, the map and uh, how the turn is playing. If you're playing a very aggressive turn, that is like attacking all over the whole game, then Ultras are really good to just like, get a fast standing army to be able to beat him back. Right. Um, but ultras are really bad, like, if both are just sitting back and you're getting ultras, they are a little bit, like, less cost-effective in a fight than broodlords are. So, I in see. a passive game, uh, broodlords are always better to get, I think. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah, so yeah, at like this point... I think this... Sorry, can I? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, like, I think there's two reasons why people get ultras in once, because it's, like, it's a lot easier to use them. Um, and the other is that um, they're quicker to get out in Brutals, so mm -hmm. yeah. um, if, you need, if you need some quick defense, Ultras will pretty much destroy timings, if you have them out in time. Yeah. And um, yeah, sort of was going for that second. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry, yeah, I was talking about the second one, he was going for, uh, for Brutals instead this time. All right, looks like Brian's taking his fourth, and yeah. I mean, you're just building that giant Broodlord count at this point. Yeah, and I don't really want to attack at all, I just want to sit back. Because this kind of composition is really hard for the Terran to deal with cost effective. Unless they um, get the Ravens out and a ton of Vikings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I like how you've, how you've put like one or two spines and a spore at each base. Because one of the things, you know, yeah. one of the negatives of having the Brutal Army, especially on this map, because it's, it's actually, it takes a little bit of time to traverse the map, is that it's, it's so slow. Right, yeah. so that drops can really, really hurt. And yeah, spores are actually really effective with this drop to like clean up the medevac so they don't just run around forever. Mm -hmm. You have to move your army there. Yep. If like the medevac, di medevac dies, you can just clean up the drop quite easily. So yeah, definitely puts a timer on the um, the drop that they have to they have to respect. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So basically, I'm just maxing out on Brood right now, mm -hmm. and. What I want to do is, I don't want to like try to remax again on Blue Lords because it would take too long and be too expensive. So okay. what, uh, he's 
like for Terran they need to commit really hard in order to count through those. They need to get a ton of Vikings, they need to get Ravens, and like yeah, only focus on Marines. So what I do is just like after I when I start attacking and I start losing units, I just uh, repopulate on Orphans. Wow, okay. How, so how do you how do you deal with these drops? Um, if you have like no lanes at all. Um, yeah, like this is really annoying. I had them infested in my main to be uh -huh. like prepared for a big drop like this. Right. But um, it's just like when you have only boot or it's uh, really annoying to deal with big drops because you're so slow. Right. You have no fast exactly. units at all. Exactly. So do you think it's? I mean, do you think it's better just to cover your bases with static or? Maybe just yeah. save some supply for Vlings. No, I, you can have some supply for Vlings, but if it were just big drops, Vlings just kind of melt. Yeah, true. At least when they're alone, so... Um, static defense is really good to have in the late game. What well, I feel at least. Um, and also, I'm getting a Nidra Swarm here. Right. Because they want to be able to plant it close to my army to front, so they can reinforce really fast. I see. So yeah, to yeah. wait for the units to run over. Yeah, people don't. Yeah, people don't use Nidus much these days. But uh, as as a form of reinforcement, it's really, really, really good. Yeah. So here I'm just preparing for the engagement. I'm splitting up my uh, brood lords so they don't get like sh shot down by. Um, it's called hunter seeker missile. And yeah, just slowly engaging. Mm -hmm. Making sure I keep my infectors in the back so they don't die. Just right. there to keep my blue cords alive. Yeah, spreading out your corruptors too. Yeah, lots of ravens. Like later game ravens these days are uh, becoming yeah popular because ravens are actually such good units. All right, here we go. Yeah. Point the fast ones are really good with corruptors. So. Oh, nice spread. Only one hunter seeker in each of those corruptors. So good. Oh, there's those PDDs you're talking about. Yeah. Sh should you kill the PDDs first, or...? Uh, well, or you don't really have anything that can kill them, because they don't take damage from Corruptors, like, until they're out of energy. When they're out of energy, like, it doesn't matter anymore. Wait, they don't take damage from... What? Well, like, well, they, they block the shots oh, from Corruptors. Oh, you're right, so you're right, I gotcha. Once, once they can fire at them, there's no point really anymore, because they're out of energy. Oh, that makes sense. I didn't even think about that. Okay, right, right. So yeah. here, you can see, it's his only building Vikings and Marines right now. So mm -hmm. my Ultras are going to be really, really effective. Yeah. And I'm building that, eight of them right now. That follow-up's going to be real good. Taking yeah. out some expensive Ravens there. Yeah. Ravens are I not cheap, really well. man. Yeah. It's really a cost-effective cost -effective fight for me, so... He's on yeah. like 120 supply and can't afford any of the new army, and I'm maxed and on a bank. Plus you have a better economy than him, so uh, yeah. any fights like that means like the the rematch is going to go fairly quickly. Yeah, that's the tough. Yeah. That's the really tough part about um, you know Terran. Some Terrans have been talking about going Sky Terran recently against Zerg, but you know what? Sky Terran's really tough. If you don't have that BC count because just the ground units yeah. will just crush you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Especially when and you also have like yeah. I feel like uh, ground Terran takes a really long time for them to build up. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. There's really no reason for the circle to sit back once he hits that ma max star with the Brood yeah. or Corruption mm -hmm. Yeah, you should just like keep searching using Ultras and Runes as yeah, much as possible. Definitely. Yeah, that, that trade er just before with the, the huge, huge Raven Brewlord battle, that was so good for you. I mean, yeah. He had, he had to win that decisively and he didn't even win that. <laughs> win it, so... No. Yeah. But he was really far behind from the earlier build, like he got really in late fourth, and mm -hmm. it was really hard to push that he didn't do much at home. So. That's true. See, this is where the this is where the ultras kind of get in trouble right here. I feel like yeah. attacking bases they are just the worst. I mean, it's yeah, they really are. <laughs> they're so terrible when it comes to like when they get inside the base. Uh. That you just running around in circles is not Yeah, no, this game is pretty much over. Yeah, pretty much. And like once he lands all those Vikings, you can just laugh because then you <laughs> can just build some brutes and he's got no Vikings left. And uh, yeah, exactly. and if he if he stops that, he's like even the odd chance he stops that, he's lost. He's gonna lose so many marines. So you just go back into the uh, ultra season and he's just dead. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's where you're, that's where you're kind of like one step ahead the whole time. Like you're anticipating, you know, his his retaliation to what you're showing right now, right? So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because uh, I don't have to react what he's getting, but he has to react what I'm getting. So right. mm -hmm. that means that I can control the game pretty much. Yeah. So I think uh, I think you built every single Zord unit in that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe right? the units and the hydras. Oh, you didn't build a unit? Yeah, Mito or Hydra. Right. Very yeah. true, very true. I don't know if I'll ever see you build a Hydra in that matchup, <laughs> unless it's Heart of the Swarm. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe? Fast Hydras, really? Come on. Uh, versus Terran, I don't know, but versus Protoss, it could be really good. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure when you're at high tech whether you want to be in Hydras. Yeah. Uh, well. That's true, but I mean, wait, Viper's not high tech, is it? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. It's Slayer, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely good, but I just still not sure. Yeah, that's true. All right, so we still got we got time for one more. You guys want to do uh, one more uh, replay? Um. Uh. Yeah. You got me. Oh gosh, I the guys. Yeah, these guys are are uh, European players, and oh man, it just. <laughs> It is sorry about it, I guess. I don't mean to like don't mean to be shaking my head at viewers, but I just oh it just drives me crazy when there are players, good players out there that you you guys just don't know about. And yeah, Zikta Mini, he's he won the WCSUK and sort of I mean he, he sort of has been all or I mean you've been playing all kinds of online tournaments and, and doing fairly you know, pretty well in all of them. So uh he both of these guys are great players, they're both from Team Western Wolves and um you'll be seeing these guys I'm telling you, you'll be seeing these guys doing a lot of good, like big things soon. So, okay, let's switch over to the overlays, and we will load up one more replay. You guys just doing so well, just blowing through the replays, man. <laughs> um, uh, should I get one or should Zikta? Get uh, one? up to you guys. Zikta, you want to uh, do it? You or can give that a. Um, uh, I haven't got any which stand out on them on this I count. So I got uh, another one which is Barak, but it's pretty much <laughs> the same. The same thing. Same uh, game. Uh, yes, try to get mm -hmm. something different. Yeah. Uh, um, I could show a uh, PVC where I go for a Muta style, if you want to. Okay. Sure. Yeah, sounds good. That'd be good. Muta style. A lot of folks seem to be. Um, uh, shine away from Mutas these days. Uh, yeah, I find it. Um, they can just uh, like a build order to throw in in a best of three, just so like they don't get too comfortable playing versus you. Mm -hmm. So they have to keep scouting and stuff like that. It's yeah. really just a mind game thing, and it's it's good to know how to play different styles. So yeah, it seems like the Muta is just mo more of a you know, just kind of a distraction, I guess, to them, even though, you know, you, you're not committing much to it. You're just committing to, I don't know, maybe like five to eight mutas or something, or eight mutas or something like that, and then you immediately switch uh, back to... I actually I actually play a really heavy muta style. Oh, really? Okay. This will be yeah. cool, then. Uh, I'm going to try to find it. I'm not sure exactly how the game looks, but I know I played muta, and I know it was fairly long, not too short. Okay. <laughs> going to end it on a long one after we've been... Uh, <laughs> been so efficient up to this point. <laughs> Good okay. stuff. Yeah, guys. Um, you know, in the meantime, while we're trying to get this set up. Oh, actually, shoot! I just realized my uh, overlay is not uh, updated with your Twitter. Uh, follow these guys on Twitter. Uh, their Twitter. Uh, their Twitter is at Zikta Mini and at WW Sort of. And uh, you guys on Twitter much? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, awesome. Yeah, definitely add these guys. You guys need more followers. You can add me too if you want. For sure. Add him and me. <laughs> uh, okay, there we go. Cloud Kingdom. Okay, downloading it real quick. Yeah, so it's a 22-minute game. So. Okay, sounds good. Oh, Should we downloading. skip the two minutes or? Yeah, uh, I'm still downloading it, but yeah, why don't we go to two minutes? And I think that's going to be a proper amount of time. 
Uh, I'm looking at the stream chat. No giveaway today, guys. We're going to be doing a giveaway next week. I only do giveaways once a week, so um, we'll do one next week. Uh, but we're going to be doing a Q&A session right after this. So guys that want to ask Zikta Mini or sort of your que uh, you know, your own question, you know, want to talk to him live, you can add me on Skype. My Skype ID is ChanmanV. And, uh, you know, you can, yeah, you can call in asking your questions. If you, you know, don't have Skype or don't want to call in, you can ask your questions in stream chat, too, and, and we'll answer them. Okay, go into two minutes. Actually, it's easy, right? We can go three minutes. It's probably okay. <laughs> Not going to yeah, miss much here. Okay, I'm there. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Oh god, people are asking, are you teammates with spades? No, they are not teammates with spades. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Ready? Yep. Okay. Yep. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Okay, against sad. Oh, meter style against Protoss. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking. Oh, uh, right. Sorry, I was thinking of ZGZ. That's why. Uh, oh, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Lots of people still do Mutas here. Yeah. So uh, it's just a pretty standard opening. Fifteen hatch, fifteen, uh, 15 pool. Mm -hmm. uh, sixteen hatch versus Nexus first. So nothing crazy going on. Okay. And um, I guess the key things to discuss with this is, I guess your third timing, you know, when you actually get on six gas. Um, yeah. Because I think you go to Muta before that, right? I mean, you're, you're going to be at Muta before your third base is really, really going like economically. Uh, no, I, I go for a, like. Oh, actually, uh, early third. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So the thing with this build is, uh, you have to be have a very good map control. Like you have to be scouting everywhere with your settings for hidden piles and hidden probes, mm -hmm. and you need to like get certain speed fairly fast so you can deny any pylons because you won't have a like huge amount of units before you get um, your mutas out. So you wanna have full map control up, up to that point and just deny every proxy pylon with speed and speed much. Okay, so your first gas is like this looks like twenty twenty six supply around the five minute mark, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. All right. And also Good with uh, this style, you have to delay your Dirt Queen just a little bit because you're getting the gas, which cuts into your minerals just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so you get yeah. speed first. Um, when do you add on the rest of the gas? Like once you, once you start layer, or? Um, yeah, after I've started layer, I add on the rest of the gas. Okay. I go up to two gas before, or like right when I start there. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I just add them on. That's how you get the minerals. Too. And the uh, I guess the the counter build to this for Protoss is is it the gateway push, like a um, seven eight gate? Probably yeah, yeah. 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 If they do that, it's all about if you can deny the uh, proxy pylon. Mm -hmm. If they get up a proxy pylon, it's really hard to do anything. But if you del delay it, you're in a pretty good shape. Yeah, particularly on this map. This map is really tough, right? Because yeah, so many like small spots where they can hide probes and yeah. put pylons. They can hide, and not to mention that there's no. I mean, I feel like you either choose to spine your third, like you have to spine your third, like in a pretty large opening there, or you have to spine your natural, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, this is a tough map. But yeah, I find this map doctor? really hard, which is Protoss. Uh, on, yeah. on a hole because of the uh, there's so many tight chokes and high grounds for force fields and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Oh my overlay! Sorry guys, screen screen uh, switch is not working for me today. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. So basically, I'll be heading up the lair right now and making a ton of settings now because this is the point where I want to be able to deny mm -hmm. any sort of pressure. Right. So I want to make sure I have the speedings out and ready. 
Yeah, so, yeah, I like how the, your speedings basically pop out right when you get speed. So, yeah. really good, good timing on it. And now I'm getting the rest of my gases. Oh, you're gonna catch oh, all I those you know, sentries, nice. Yeah, and when you go for um, such early speed, you can generally um, delay the expansion by like a minute or so. Yeah. Yeah, they have to warp in more units before they can actually go out and take yeah. the third. Mm -hmm. Like, he wanted to take it about eight minutes or so, I think. Yeah, pretty but much. But it's probably going to be in about 30 seconds to a minute before he can, um, before he can actually take it. Yeah, if and they go if if they go with the really big two base push because of this, like in retaliation to it, um, yep. do you usually go base race here, or do um, you try? Do you just you know fall back and try to engage it with? It it really depends on the army that they have. If you feel that you can beat it, then may, then you can just stop it. Okay. Like, say defensive, and also mm -hmm. it depends if you see that they have like a full wall of sentries behind, and you can't get your surging scene really. Your first meters are not enough to. The base race with, so you need to get the starting in there as well. I see. Okay. You'll have meters by that time, though, right? So you can pick off sentries yeah. if they are at the front. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, just about the time factor how long it takes to knock down the wall and then get in. Mm -hmm. Got it. Alright, so he's building that wall at the top of that ramp, which is good for him. Yeah, and now he's getting his Nexus, which is really delayed. He had to walk in a ton of sevens before he could, he could do it. Mm hmm. Alright, he's got a work prism. Yeah, his work prism seems yeah. delayed and too. <laughs> and now you're going to be getting mutas, <laughs> which is <laughs> the counter to yeah. it, so. Yeah, he went for the uh, work prism before Observer, which is a bit of a conflict, really. Yeah. So yeah, that's true. Um, it didn't heaven. pay off for him, really. Yeah, it was really delayed, I mean. And then here he comes. Come yeah. to the first 11 mutas, and you're already on a fourth. No threat to the fourth either at all. No, but when you see them yeah. taking a third, you know that you're, you're completely safe. Mm -hmm. And any all push right. they're going to do is going to be rid of them. Here come the mutas, <laughs> right when that happens. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, look at that. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. I mean, how many drones did he kill there? He killed like one drone. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to be the extent of the damage. Maybe he kills a few more lanes here, but... Like that Overseer is actually the first time he's followed Scouting at all. So, um, he was playing really risky and couldn't have about any information. Yeah. Yeah. And now he scouts my Spire, but it's <laughs> a bit glitch. Yeah. He cancelled his Nexus? He cancelled his Nexus? Oh, well, I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. You forced him to cancel it? I didn't see that. Cool. Hmm, I don't remember, actually. I don't yeah. think so. Wow, okay. Hopefully he didn't accidentally do that. That was pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, all right. So you're gonna take that fight. You got what do you got? You got like 10, 11, 11 against four stalkers. Yeah, that's a good fight, right? Yeah. Oh, with the stun, with the cannon. So th these are the see. Th these are like the little decisions that I think a lot of people screw up right here. <laughs> yeah. Like not sure whether to fight or not. Yeah. With Mutas, you basically only one of the fights that you're like 100% sure that you can win. Like you, you want to lose as little meters as possible. Yeah. Right. It's not even about being like cost effective. It's just that if you're losing meters at all, um, in exchange for stalkers, it's pretty bad for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're almost better off just not attacking to be honest. Should be safe, right? Because, like you said, yeah, getting to that, that massive, that massive meter yeah. count is just, just crazy. Comes like it's an avalanche for them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I just want to make sure I'm active on the map make sure that he he can't move out without me like forcing a base trade. Mm -hmm. If he moves out he has to be prepared to base trade pretty much. But you're staying on Muta though. You're not you're not trying to go hive here or anything, so no, I'm staying Muta for now because I want to make sure I always have enough to base trade. Mm, okay. And when I feel like I get the economy to get maxed and also like pick up the hive, I'll do that. Yep, do you have right. our bendings in here by the way? What? Do you ever add banelings in? Like you just throw the banelings. Uh, in. yeah. Sometimes if I kill up all the sentries, but yeah, not like all the time. Yeah, I, I, I do like the main strength of this is when when you engage to like send links and visas and snipe all the sentries and then come back with um, a mass amount of banelings to like destroy everything else. Yeah. 
I'm getting yeah. a Bane just now, but he's pretty much scored. Like, if he attacks me, I won't be able to. Yeah. Bane is Bane in case. Anything. So, my mute account isn't too high, but I've done a lot of damage. I killed a lot of probes, and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, how many probes have you killed now? You killed 14? Okay. Yeah. Alright, coming in again, kind of double, dual prong again. Yeah. And also, he's forced to stay in his way. base. Yeah. But him staying in his base, I mean, is it? Well, I mean, you're getting trades now too, which is good. But if he wasn't getting tra if you weren't getting trades, I mean, his army just, you know, would be continually building up here, right? And yeah, I mean, eventually well, you'll get to the point where you just can't engage that army because it's so strong. Yeah, exactly. So that's now I'm starting to tech up again. I'm getting infestation pit, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna head to hive pretty soon, I think. Okay. But otherwise, I he's still on. A fairly small army, like isn't that big, and he's only now adding high tempo. Right. Yeah, so I mean, th I've I've definitely lost a lot of games, like in this position, believe it or not, because I just, yeah. you know, it's like I don't. What do I do? I mean, it's like, do I keep, you know, do I keep building mutas, or do I, yeah, know, try to well, get a hive and have no supply left to to do anything with it? I'm just, if he moves out, if I mm. if I see his army, I say, okay, I can beat that army, then I just kill it. But if I don't think I can get it, I just go for the base trade. Okay. And he has to be prepared for it, and right now he isn't. He needs like a ton of cannons and high Templars everywhere right. in order to be safe versus a base trade. Yeah, and right now you're building spines too, just in case of that scenario where you. you yeah. do